This is Twit. This show is uh, going to be about uh, Flexera's open source uh, license compliance report. And uh, it's uh, the show was brought to me a few weeks ago, and and um, I, I've been describing it uh, before I've actually got to ha- my hands on the actual report as something that would talk about the relative CVEs in open source uh, software, things like that, the, the, the dangers of, of that, and maybe license compliance, things like that. Uh, as I read the report, I find out that it's more about uh, it's more of a pa- white paper to managers about um, trying to figure out the business risks from using open source software. Now, Simon, you and I go way back on the open source world. In fact, you're, you're president of the OSI right now, right? I am still president of OSI for another month or so until I get the opportunity to hand the baton over to a new intake. Uh, we have our elections on the go at the moment. And if you're an OSI member, which, of course, all our listeners and viewers are, uh, you need to go vote. Uh, that's my plug. But, yeah, I've been doing this for a little while now. Yeah, and you were an uh, open source uh, guy, advocate, whatever the title was, for uh, Sun for many years too, right? Indeed. I'm, I got uh, uh, Java open source and uh, uh, Unix open source and a load of identity middleware open source and a load of mm-hmm. compilers open source. I, actually, a, a great achievement for me this week is I've, I've, I've finally got an Apache.org email address because I've been enjoy, invited to join the PMC for NetBeans, which is now an Apache project. So nice. that all dates back to the Sundays as well. What 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 do you and I see as the biggest risks to using open source in our uh, our projects? Um, you know the, the 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 biggest challenges to using open source are when businesses decide that they're going to treat it as a natural resource that they can just strip mine. Um, uh, open source, when you join the community and use the code, uh, is is incredibly uh, valuable. It lets you uh, just invest in the things that are of benefit to you. And then it, the rest of the community, as they benefit from your contribution, also maintain your code for you. They check it for security. They mm. uh, typically will review it for uh, license and compliance risks. So when you're a member of a community, uh, I, I regard open source as a, as a massive benefit. And the only people who've really got any risks from using open source are people who try and cheat and who try and steal it. Mm, yeah, yeah. And I, I, I fairly fully concur with that. And and also, you know, we hear occasionally about security issues in open source software. And, you know, if you go through the list of CVEs and stuff, you can see that sometimes things break. Um, but if you look at the number of lines of code executed every day versus the number of problems we've had from open source, uh, most of the issues seem to be misconfigurations or uh, or uh, you're bringing too many things together that were wrong or whatever. Um, and, and license compliance also seems to be fairly low issue. The only thing I remember was like TiVo had to make their kernel open because they use some um, GPL software. So I think the the GPL virus vector is probably the biggest issue around license compliance. Uh, Would you agree? Uh, I wouldn't dream of using those terms to describe the issue, Randall. Uh, I think that uh, the, the GPL is a great license for keeping a level playing field in communities where everybody is subject to the same terms. Uh, there, there are still some license compliance issues. There's a, a big project at uh, um, the Linux Foundation at the moment called Open Chain, which is all about helping the different vendors in a supply chain uh, declare their use of open source software so that the next vendor along the supply chain can uh, quickly become comfortable that the software is properly licensed and that they are complying with the terms. Uh, I'd say that for uh, businesses that are not uh, strip mining open source. Compliance has become a whole lot easier. There's a whole load of open source tools. Um, There are some great open source projects like OpenChain. At at, uh, OSI, we're uh, um, uh, hosting a new project which is helping uh, automate the process of license detection. So I I would say that it's it's pretty much an addressed problem. And um, the companies that came into the space a number of years ago to try and monetize fear, uncertainty, and doubt, like people like Black Duck have, have had to move on and uh, move into other areas. For example, they're now um, monetizing fear, uncertainty, and doubt in the, uh, the IoT sector and in open mm. hardware uh, rather than uh, exclusively in open source software now. So I, I do think that compliance remains a, an important issue. You know, the license says some, some things. Um, if you're using software under the, BIT, B, uh, the BSD or MIT licenses, they require you 
to maintain the historic copyright statements of all the previous contributors. And uh, to be in compliance with the BSD license, you have to make sure that you are preserving all the copyright statements. And uh, I think the businesses that are not strip miners, that are actually community members and uh, are acting responsibly, um, they, they do the right thing. They build uh, compliance into their continuous integration server. Uh, they use open source tools to, uh, to make sure that they're complying. And uh, I regard it as largely a solved problem these days.